evaluation. I won't, I won't go over how to evaluate them. So, all right, so we're going to use the difference. So the first thing is once we have the cosine, we know we have to use the, our, um, our formula, u minus b, which is going to equal the cosine of u times the cosine of v plus the sine of u times the sine of v. Correct? We know that our u is 9 pi over 4, so it's going to be cosine of 9 pi over 4 times the cosine of positive 5 pi over 6 <coughs> plus the sine of 9 pi over 4 times the sine of 5 pi over 6. Whew, right? Now, last, uh, last problem, I already showed you guys how to evaluate for those two angles. So we're all in a good understanding that um, the coordinate points for 9 pi over 4, we rewrote that as pi over 4, which gave us the coordinate point of square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. Is everybody in agreement with that on the inner circle, what I did last time? And then also we looked at, uh, what was it, 5 pi over 6. And under looking at 5 pi over 6, we are understanding that that is the reflection of pi over 6. But it's in the second quadrant, so that coordinate point was negative square root of 3 over 2 comma 1 half. And we're good with that as well, right? OK. So now to evaluate the cosine, remember the cosine is your x coordinate of where your angle crosses the unit circle at which point. So the cosine, so now what we're going to do is just evaluate for each of these coordinates. So what Abel will write in is negative square root of 3 over 2 for cosine of 9 pi over 4. So write in 1 half for cosine of 5 pi over 6, plus the sine now represents the y coordinate. So the sine in this case is now going to be um, for 9 pi over 4, which is square root of 2 over 2. Oh. I looked at this one, right? I looked at 5 pi over 6. Well, I see what you, I say this should be, well, hold on, let's write this right. So 9 pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Then negative square root of 3 pi over 4, right? Thank you. The sine of 9 pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2, and the sine of 5 pi over 6 is 1 half. Yes, thank you very much. All right, so now we just need to simplify. So to simplify, we need to multiply across. Square root of 2 times negative square root of 3 is going to be a negative square root of 6 over 4. Plus square root of 2 times 1 is the square root of 2 over 4. All right, yes, that is the correct answer right there. However, you need to look to simplify to get full credit, as well as when you guys look on your, uh, you know, an exam, the simplified answer is what you're going to have to look for. So you're going to have to see how can you simplify this. If you look for common denominators of your numerator, between 6 and 2, you see the common denominator is 2. So I'm sorry, common factor is 2, so you can factor that out. Except now we're dealing with the square root of 6 and the square root of 2, so the common factor would be the square root of 2. So I factor out the square root of 2. I can factor out my common denominator of 4, and I'll just be left with a negative square root of 3 plus 1. Again, ladies and gentlemen, if you try it and you're like, I don't know if that's right or not, go back to distributive property and make sure it works. Square root of 2 times 4 times negative 3 gives you negative square root of 6 over 4. Square root of 2 over 4 times 1 gives you square root of 2 over 4. Yes? Can you factor out um, negative square root of 3? Yeah, that'd be fine as well. Um, like That's fine. Yeah, you could have negative square root of 2 over 4 times square root of 3 minus 1. That's fine. OK? Cool? Does that help out, Sarah? 